What if I told you you could play as some of your favorite Final Fantasy VII characters in a fighting game? No, not that one. No, not that one either. I'm talking about something that's a little bit more obscure, something you may or may not have heard of. But let me introduce it to you the same way it was introduced to me. To do that, we must go back. Back to the year 1999. You see, official PlayStation Magazine would include demo discs with a handful of demos and video clips of upcoming or available games. My brothers and I would get a lot of mileage out of any demo discs we could get our hands on because they were free, essentially. So one day, we get this. Look at that, Gex 3. What's this, Legend of Lagaya? Urgies? Ur... Urgiz? Urges? Urguys? I don't know. It looks like a generic fighting game trying to steal Tekken's thunder. I wasn't interested. Then my brother played it and called out to me, Dude, Brandon, you gotta come see who's in this game! I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> Cloud Strife from my favorite game ever, Final Fantasy VII. And he looks so good in 3D. I mean, look at how much better he looked than the field model you saw him as for the majority of Final Fantasy VII. But the demo ended right after your battle with Cloud, and you couldn't even play as him. I needed to know more. What other Final Fantasy characters are in this game? Just Final Fantasy VII? What about VIII? I needed to play the full game to find out, and sure enough, one day I would get my chance and be able to rent it from Blockbuster. I saw the cover, and take a look at this. There he is, smack dab in the middle of the box art, light gleaming from the pommel of the legendary Buster Sword clutched in his hands, and look at the back of the case, is that... is that Sephiroth? You can actually play as Sephiroth? We took it home, we fired it up, the intro cinematic was action-packed and super interesting, but no Final Fantasy characters were in sight. Just this eclectic group of fighters. Among the cast of seemingly generic characters were six Final Fantasy VII characters. Some of them unlocked after completing an arcade run with Final Fantasy VII characters. Cloud, Sephiroth, Vincent, Yuffie, Tifa, and... Zack? Zack Fair? That's right! This is the first playable appearance of Zack Fair. See, before Crisis Core, Zack was one of the most interesting, enigmatic characters of Final Fantasy VII, and you can play as him here! And Air Guys, God bless the ring. Cool name aside, this game is actually pretty mediocre. So what is Air Guys? It's the name of a tournament held in-game, similar to how the Iron Fist tournament is in Tekken, but also it's the name of a mystical sword all the fighters are after. It had some really interesting ideas for a 3D fighter. It plays more akin to Power Stone than Tekken, allowing you to freely move around in a 3D environment, which could make for some interesting, unique tactics with all the different character abilities. It has a variety of modes in minigames, and an arcade mode that unfortunately pits you against characters in the same order in the same levels, which gets pretty tedious for unlocking special characters and costumes. It had a versus mode for head-to-head -head battles with your friends, and a training mode. There's also bonus mini games for the console release of Air Guys. That's right, this was an arcade game. Isn't that weird? See, that must explain these obnoxious menu sounds. Some of the special modes like Beach Battle were fun to see someone like Sephiroth participate in a silly beach day activity. Go! Excellent! And there's also this weird panel minigame that's really not that fun at all in a race mode. There's also this other extra mode, but we'll get into that later. The gameplay really is a mess. Basic actions like blocking and grabbing are made difficult by changing your stance in between crouching and standing, which is really unconventional for a fighting game. All of the characters have unique movesets, although some of the Final Fantasy VII characters included are clones of other generic original fighters. The coolest part is each character's special meter moves. Some fighters are way more powerful than others in this area, such as Cloud and Sephiroth for example, they have amazingly overpowered specials when compared to other characters, but check out how ridiculous this guy's special is. Ken! 
All these characters have some really cool combos, but I'm not good enough to pull them off consistently. So I recommend you find a video of someone who can because when they work, they're actually pretty cool looking. Probably the most disappointing aspect of this entire game is the cast of original characters. If you take them for surface value, they certainly appear to be Tekken ripoffs. God Hand looks like Kazuya, Prince Doza looks like Bruce, Lee looks like, well, Lee, and Han looks like how how wrong? Hairwink? How wrong? Hair row? Hairline? How wrong? Harang? Me please be the word. The artwork and character design was done by none other than Tetsuya Nomura of Kingdom Hearts fame, but before he became obsessed with buckles, pouches, and zippers. If you consult the manual or look it up online, these characters actually have interesting backstories, but none of that is conveyed through the actual game itself. For example, you can learn why God Hand has a cool gun arm, or why Han has a robot leg that shoots rockets. I want a cool robot leg that shoots rockets. Even in the arcade endings for each character are just super vague or they're bloopers of the intro cutscene. The best ending in the game, though, clearly is Dasher Nobas, where he eats bowls of ramen forever until you decide to skip the cutscene. Let's... It really does just go on forever. The only hint of story we get is if you're able to break these weird glass boxes in the credit sequence after the arcade mode, impale this big monster creature with the swords that come out of said boxes, and pick up all the coins, stars, and wait, is that, is that Han's leg? Yeah, Han is the only character to have two different endings depending on if you get this leg or not. You're then able to pick up the air guy's sword, and then it says this. You got air guys. You got a great sword with the materia. The materia radiates an eerie glow. At last, its eternal power is in your hands. Now you could be anything, even a god. Or, wait a minute, materia? Like, magic materia? This really is a Final Fantasy VII game. From a presentation perspective, I gotta say, this game looks really great and runs pretty smoothly. All the stages look pretty cool despite how seemingly random they are. It always kind of bothered me how the backdrops are these 2D images that are a little too far back to give the illusion of a proper background. Like I had mentioned earlier, I dig the artwork for all the character portraits and character designs. They really did an excellent job with the representation of the Final Fantasy VII characters here, even going as far to include some special alternate costumes for some of the characters that are some pretty deep cuts and a real treat for a Final Fantasy VII fan such as myself. Every character does get unlockable costumes, but the requirements to do so are so cryptic and the game doesn't tell you how to do any of it. The music and audio design is really hit or miss for me. There's some pretty decent tracks in the stages and modes, but some of the songs here are just ugh. The sound effects are a real treat and they've been kind of an inside joke between my friend group and I because some of them are pretty ridiculous. To be honest, this video actually started out as something completely different. Uh, it was me wanting to complete this one other mode I haven't discussed yet. Brand new quest, the Forsaken Dungeon! This extra mode was made for the console release of Air Guys and always mystified me as a kid, but it was super difficult and I couldn't get to the bottom of it, so I decided to return to it. In this mode, you play as two original characters, the archaeologist Koji and his student Claire in their pursuit to discover the mystery of immortality. Koji's the dude I showed you earlier with the sick MMA moves. He's also the father of Yo-Yo Yoko, another Air Guys character, and the three-time champion of the Air Guys tournament. You wouldn't know any of that if you didn't read the manual. You can play as either Claire or Koji, and long story short, you descend the randomly generated Forsaken Dungeon to reach the bottom in pursuit of the secret of immortality. There's this bizarre little town with a hotel, weapon shop, restaurant, item shop, blacksmiths, and a magic shop, and you can find items and gold in the dungeon and return them here to the villagers for upgrades and better gear. You have a health bar, a hunger bar, magic points, and an inventory space to manage. You can level up the characters separately, increasing their stats, even customizing their attributes through the foods you eat and the gods you offer items to. Overall, it's really weird. It really is a cool little mode they absolutely did not have to throw in, 
Unfortunately, it's super tedious, difficult, and once again, super vague on the story. I got about halfway through the quest and I decided I didn't have the time or patience for it, and I just looked up the ending. Trust me, it is not worth playing through. Air Guys tries to blend the DNA of Power Stone and Tekken, but ends up just being okay. If you're a huge Final Fantasy VII fan like me, knock yourself out. It's a fun little time capsule to see these characters represented before we had proper ways to enjoy them outside of their own game. Had it not been for the inclusion of Final Fantasy VII characters though, this game would be even more obscure and forgotten than it already has been. Which is sad, because they really could have had something special here had they fleshed out the characters and world of the Air Guys universe. Hey everyone, thanks so much for checking out this video, it means a lot to me. And if you want to help this channel grow a little bit, if you could, just click that subscribe button, it's free. All you gotta do is click the button and share the show with everyone you know. Thanks, see you next time.